Go ahead. Make my day. Hello, once again, this is Magma WK, and today we're going to be reviewing Dirty Harry for the Nintendo Entertainment System, made by our friends at Graymar Incorporated, made all the way in 1990, towards the later part of the Nintendo's legacy. And right off the bat, we get attacked by three dudes here. The most of cocktails and punks with whips and chains and knives. The uh, moves are fairly standard. With the A button, you draw your gun, and then you can adjust the angle and shoot again with the A button. Your B button is punch, up and B is kick. And there's the inventory screen with the start button. You notice you start with about 25 bullets, and then you have a bunch of items that you don't get until later. But you do have uh, two crowbars, which you can use to enter locked doors. So let's go forward and see what fun we have. Oh yeah, and this thing has a very odd mechanism for the jump. You have to press both B and A at the same time. And then of course your direction, if you want to go a direction. And down in the sewers we go, we find out that it is very dark. And these little things, uh, yeah, attack us. And we can't go forward, unfortunately, so let's go into a building here. And breaking in the ring. We smash people's furniture, yes. Let's kick open these drawers here. Not punch, kick. Yes, this is all pre record footage for your convenience, for my convenience. Anyways, once we get up here, we'll discover that. Whoa! Sniper! Darn snipers. And, whoa! Oh, that guy looks big. And the music chains must be a boss. So let's take him out. Uh. Yeah, that just happened. Boing! Bullets bounce off him. And that wasn't smart either, so let's see if we can beat the heck out of him. I kicked him square in the nuts! Nothing happened! So, okay, punches don't seem to be working either. Doesn't have any sign of any damage there. I mean, that guy's one, one hell of a punch. Snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? So it ends up you beating these snakes by jumping on top of them. Who would have thought of that? Stomping on snakes. It's a miracle, I tell you. And going outside, we'll face these dudes and get a trash can lid. Uh, yeah, it looks like I'm holding a pizza or something. Anyway, this trash can lid is effective against projectiles such as the nets. This guy is trying to entrap us in, which would be very nasty. And there's a lot an unusual amount of platforming in this game. we we'll have to climb ladders and jump cross walls to get to our next destination. And you can take fall damage in this game, so you gotta be careful. If you fall from a high ledge, boom, splat. In this game you'll face a lot of dangers, including these uh, infrared wires that shock you if you land on them. Nice little trap there. And you can use the plastic explosives to open safes and hopefully get decent items. And now that we have flashlight, let's go ahead through the sewers, which is absolute hell, by the way. Besides, ooh, what the hell was that? A remote control car. Okay, toxic sludge, cockroaches that hurt you, bums. I hate bums. Kick them in the face. Yeah, and then it gets, just gets ridiculous after a while. The electricity, toxic sludge, and you go all this way to find out. Nope, you can't go there. But let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about the game itself. As you see, there are only three stages there. And I'm going to enter a uh, code here to give me infinite lives, because you'll need infinite lives to get through this game. You start out with five lives and get two continues, then it's all game over. But. I'm going to enter Clyde here and get our infinite lives and you'll see that even when we die our lives are not taken off. So let's go ahead and go through stage one see how good we can do here. The problem with this stage 
is that it's a constant maze you'll end up with stuff you didn't think would hurt you in the first place, like this awning, for example. You'll meet these strange NPCs, I'm sorry, non-player characters, that seem to do nothing unless you do something special in front of them. Remember that bouncer that kept kicking our butts? And we couldn't do nothing to him? Well, this bookie here, apparently if you jump in front of him, He'll change clothes with you. I don't know why he won't change back. But now that you have this cool new white suit, you can actually go to our boss here, and he'll just plain ignore you. And what's past his door? Yay, you've saved the princess! Joy! And what did she give you? Of course, you have to jump in front of her, and she gives you a couple lives there. The lives, if we're in normal play, we desperately need. Especially for parts like this, the sewer and platforming. This part is a real pain. As you'll see from the uh, troublesome controls, or just bad, plain bad playing. As the just jumps seem very stiff. It just doesn't seem to respond often, or even respond at all. And have you seen from previous footage, there's just been nothing but trouble as far as actually having to draw your gun, then adjust your gun, and then finally shoot your gun. But as we're doing our epic failure here, and we all finally get past it in this scene, it just feels like it's a fight on your behalf to get Harry to do what you want him to do. So let's go ahead and flip the switch here by pressing up. And hopefully you kept the instruction manual, or you wouldn't know how to do half this stuff. Whatever remote control car is doing in the sewer, I don't know. But let's go ahead to our first real boss here. His name is Gruff, supposedly. And he throws grenades at you while jumping. And of course, you'll have to take him out with your gun. Because punching will do no good. The problem is, once again with the adjusting, you have to adjust your gun, get in the right position, and then shoot before he throws his grenade. But this isn't going to work very well, so... Fortunately, we have our Limitless Live code. We we'll have to shoot about five or six times, and eventually he'll go down. The timing on this is pretty absurd. As you cannot hit him from the ground, you must hit him while he's in midair, otherwise he'll merely jump over the bullet or deflect it. And once you defeat him, you get a couple of much needed lives as you go to the next part here, and I do my victory dance. Oh, did I mention platforming is a pain? Well, that's kind of cool to hang from the wires and such. Any such shot will knock you down. So you'll have to find yourself guessing at what a platform is, or else you'll get shocked and get stuck between doors and have to go all the way back, or walls there rather. And make sure we progress through here, and we'll get to perhaps what is the dirtiest trick in this entire game. Being Dirty Harry, you think there'd be dirty tricks, of course. So we're just going through like normal avoiding snakes and such. This game just seemed like a real nice uh, try at adaptation of the movie from what I've heard. I have not been able to see the movie myself. But the real problem just comes when trying to actually do controls, beat up your enemies, and just basically survive through the game. You should have to have so many lives to get through it. And here's the room. Ha ha ha. Guess what? No way out. That's right, you can search for a way out here, get your items, try to blow up everything and anything. There is no exit. And why they give you items in a room where you can't find any escape, I don't know. This is just pure evil, I should say. Reminds me of the uh, Zork in the King's Quest games where there was a room where you there's no escape, and you just sat there eating chili dogs. Chili dogs are storing half your health. And wondering, 
is this really it? Is this the end? Or is it... There's got to be some way out there. I mean, use every single item you have, every single move, think about invisible walls, and nothing. It's just a... what you call a zombie ending. A zombie game over where you don't know where... if you're at a game over or not. And let's stay doing the credits and for more of an opinion. Stage 2 is the docks, and shown here is Stage 3, Alcatraz. These are not nearly as bad maze-wise, but do pose a lot of platforming and very hair-raising action. Unfortunately, it just seems after Stage 1 you're all pooped out on this game with its bad control, and it tried to be complex, but it just didn't work. Magma WK, signing off.